Welcome to the My Personal Football Coach Youth Soccer Player Development Podcast, episode 33 with Boris Kubler. Welcome to MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Soccer Player Development Podcast. Discover all the secrets, hints and tips about soccer player development and soccer coaching from some of the leading figures in world soccer. Here's your host, Saul Isaacson Hurst. Hi guys, welcome back to another show. Uh, before we get into our guests, just want to say a uh, big thanks to all the feedback we've been getting about uh, the My Personal Football Coach, the new e-learning course, the My Personal Football Coach Level 1 Elite Soccer Coaching Ball Mastery 1v1. Uh, the feedback's been fantastic. Thanks very much for all the messages. Uh, remember, you know, if we're thinking about themes that we're reoccurring things we're getting from this podcast and uh, and the vid- visits when I go around the world of some of the best academies in world football, uh, certainly 1v1 and Ball Mastery are real key key themes in in the best talent development centers in world football and you're going to hear that again today so uh the the my personal football coach uh, level one elite soccer coaching and ball mastery and 1v1 gives you a real uh, key uh, understanding about first of all what real quality ball mastery and 1v1 looks like and then how to effectively use it in your session so um if you're interested in it if you if you haven't yet checked it out go to mypersonalfootballcoach.com and uh, check out the course this course is unique, there's nothing else like this in the world, so really proud of it and uh, that really gives you a breakdown of these fundamental areas and how to, and more, most importantly, how to construct quality uh, technical coaching sessions uh, for players of all age groups and abilities. So if you're really uh, serious about um, coaching players and, and, and want to take your coaching game to the next level, make sure you go to mypersonalfootballcoach.com and check out our e-learning course there, uh, really supporting coaches of uh, players of all ages and abilities all around the world. Now to the uh, show, we've got a great guest, uh, Boris Kubler, who's um, head of coaching, head of coach education for the Croatian FA. Uh, I met uh, Boris at a at the uh, International Sports uh, Convention in Geneva where we were both presenting. Uh, what's a really interesting presentation that he delivered about Coach Ed in Croatia and uh, how far they've come. So I was really, uh, really uh, proud that he, he agreed to come on the show and uh, share some of his work. And obviously we know how successful um, Croatia have been recently. Uh, he also talks about his time at Dynamo Zagreb when he was an assistant coach there of the first team and uh, working with players such as Luka Modric. So lots of great insight in this episode. I'm sure you're really going to enjoy it for uh, for all you Croatian technical football enthusiasts. So uh, really get to understand what goes on behind the scenes there. Um, busy couple of months for myself coming up, uh, heading to Chicago uh, in January. Looking forward to that convention. So uh, we're going to have a my personal football coach stall out there. So you're interested in finding out more about the club partnerships. Uh, or the the e-learning course, or the dynamic ball mastery program, the uh, the world's leading online homework uh, training app. Then uh, just come come by and uh, see us. Uh, drop me a message if you'd like to connect. Uh, I want to meet up with as many people as possible. Also, please remember if you are enjoying the show, please do leave a review. Um, it really uh, it really does uh, make a difference, and I really do appreciate it. But uh, without further ado, let's get into the show. So, Boris Kubler, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Uh, can you give us a little, just a brief outline of your uh, your playing and coaching journey up to this point, please? Well, uh, definitely I work in the education department of Croatian Football Federation. And uh, in my uh, football career, well, actually, I was not a professional player. I was just in amateur clubs. But uh, in the coaching area, I was working in Dinamo Zagreb two and a half years, and I was really proud and honored that I worked with a lot of uh, temporarily top players, uh, for example, Mr. Modric, Manchuki, Chorluka, and the others. So uh, that was my, my top level of the coaching area. Uh, before, I was working in uh, some amateur clubs as director uh, of the youth team. I was working with some grassroots level teams. Uh, I was also observer and uh, uh, ob- ob- observer in a team in uh, Niko Kovac uh, time in 2014. So that's that that's most important from from my my career. And so just um, okay. So we started your your career at Dynamo. Tell us a little bit about your role there. What we what were you doing there? <laughs> Uh, in Dinamo Zagreb, I was uh, two and a half years assistant coach in uh, several coaches there, head coaches. 
First of all, there was uh, Branko Ivanković, head coach uh, of uh, that team. Uh, I was also working with the uh, analysis uh, of the team, working with the pro zone, with the, working with the, some uh, observing of the games and uh, finding talented players around. Um, I was also uh, there with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Marian Black also. Uh, as assistant coach, I was there with uh, uh, Zvonimir Soldo, so three coaches was in that time uh, their head coaches. So I was there as assistant coach, that was my first role, and another one was analysis uh, of the game, of the players, and observing the uh, talented players. So, so you're working with the first team? Yeah, I was with the first team in the, in so the Dinamo Zag. So tell us a little bit about the uh, the dynamo there, how it works. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's obviously it's got such a proud, amazing tradition about developing players. Why, why do you think it's been so successful? Uh, I think that uh, they they had a good plan for uh, uh, develop players, and also they have very very good scouting team around uh, our country and also out of our country, which. Uh, uh, give uh, to Dynamo possibility to find excellent players which are born in uh, uh, in Croatia and they they can they can come also to play in our country and then after after Dynamo they they started to play for our our national team and also they have very good uh, school potentially um, uh, uh, nice way to develop players and to give uh, to players opportunity to grow during the excellent uh, environment and also competition and the uh, possibility to, to come in the first team uh, and then uh, go uh, abroad and make a good uh, transfer because they have probably good uh, relations with uh, other teams around the Europe so that is good opportunity to, to, to make success. I mean, it's, it's quite a unique model there, isn't it, I suppose, because you, almost the, the academy is set up to produce players to sell to the best teams in Europe, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, I think that also uh, very good coaches there are also uh, one of the reasons they are having very good success. And also they have a very good scouting team below in, in the smaller clubs, in the smaller regions, because we in Croatia are divided into five regions. Dinamo Zagreb uh, exists in one region and they have a lot of colleagues and head coaches in other clubs which are uh, related to, to the Dinamo and make good cooperation in the further success of the players. I mean, it's, uh, I mean are we, we focus quite a lot on the academy on this show. I mean, and uh, the earliest... The beginning stages or the 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 you know the development stages, but t I mean you're involved in that the latter part there when you're actually getting players into the first team, which is such okay. an important part of that journey. Just tell us a little bit about that. You know how do Dynamo integrate these young talented players into the first team, and 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 how does that? What part of the process does that make? How 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 come they've been so successful in doing that 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 last part of the journey for players? Uh, I, I think that uh, well, uh, connection with the uh, with the uh, lower level clubs is the crucial of the of the success because uh, every every club can can get uh, top players uh, when when they are developed uh, in in the top level. But if you need to 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 have some uh, way some path of development, then it's a different story. So uh, you actually from the beginning need uh, very big help from the from the lower level clubs because uh, environment and uh, the place where they live will give uh, to the players good possibility to develop uh, themselves during the early ages and then after that if they are very good uh, they are involved also in activities which will organize by uh, by the by the top the top club which will find the uh, talented players and uh, they will develop them during the, during the period in the club, uh, give them opportunity to work with the best players because in the all ages they are uh, having very good uh, players, very good uh, uh, potential. So in uh, five, six, seven years of development, they will, they will, they will push the, the best one on the top and, and find them uh, as a possibility to fill uh, first team and then go to the national team and also to have success. 
So I think that the, 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 the main, main, main and crucial thing is that a good connection and a, a good choice of the, of the coaches and a connection with the lower level clubs and the support of that is uh, the main reason that they have success today. And uh, I mean, I, I've been fortunate enough to visit um, Dynamo, the academy, a couple of times and been really interested in the uh, the culture there. It's really consistent from the under eights all the way to the to the B team, which I saw train, you know, when I was there last time uh, in terms of the te- in terms of the technical quality and the detail they're, they're delivering. I mean, what's what's the what's the culture like and the philosophy like in the first team? Obviously, we know it's a bit different. The realities are different in professional football at the highest level. I mean, do they try and continue that? Uh, well, actually, it's a very good idea that they have a B team, so that uh, they have possibility for the for the for the players which are not uh, which which did not uh, achieve the top level of the playing, and they have maybe some later mature of of the players. So there is a possibility to 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 to, to watch and to look look at the 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 way they can they can they can uh, start to grow. Between between uh, uh, we can say youth level and in the professional level, so some kind is an obstacle for the players to 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 find themselves in the in the professional level. They can maybe stay on the same level during the couple of years, and maybe it will be uh, uh, some 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 obstacle to make success. So I think that Dynamo recognized this problem and also give possibility to players to go around in maybe some other clubs and stay connected with the clubs. And then they have uh, 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 obser- observing all the time for that players. So I think that uh, connection of the of the top of the uh, school of the youth school in the club and also the B team between the youth and the and the top top club and also connection with the clubs around in in, in lower level of competition is a good approach uh, in developing both the player and the support and also. Some kind of safety for the player that they are always looking at the player. They give them possibility to play and develop in the other uh, other clubs. And this is the path that uh, will bring success for the player. If not, he will stay and play in the lower level clubs and try to reach some uh, upper level. But uh, mostly, the best of them will go and return to to to, to Dynamo to the first player and start to start the career. For example, that was the Luka Modric way because he, he was actually a few times away from Dynamo and finally at the end he was he was in the in the first team and he started uh, his way as as he is on the top level today. But you, is there a um, is there is there a, a way of playing in the first team like a Dynamo way like as you know from what I'm talking about is that the academy there's a very consistent approach in the way they deliver and the way they play. Does that carry on through to the first team? Is there expectations of a certain style of football they're supposed to play or is it just dependent on who the manager is at that uh, time? I think, I think, on my opinion, it's depending <coughs> on the way uh, or the way of the manager and the head coach they have in the club. Because, for example, now is Nenad Bielica, head coach of, uh, of the team in, in, in Dynamo and his, his philosophy is uh, quite different from, from the other coaches uh, which, which were before. Uh, in, 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 in one or two years before. So uh, I think that uh, football is developing all the time. So uh, every coach has to, to follow that trends and, and ideas, no matter what philosophy they have. And I think that uh, <clears throat> also uh, school will de- develop top players in, uh, in the way of technique perfects and the tactic solutions and the tactic opinions that players need to have for every situation and every level and every every uh, possibility in in the team, so that they can they can achieve demands on every position in the in the team. If you if you prepare only one player for the one position that is in the modern trends of development of the player today, really uh, not enough because they have to be universal to to play in the in the lot of uh, roles in the team. I don't think that Dynamo recognized it and developed players for every every uh, role in the team. I mean, it's, it's quite a unique um, club in terms of you're, you're consistently, you know, at the top of the um, the productivity <clears throat> ratings for for uh, producing professional footballers. So it's quite interesting to look at the, this last stage, this last phase of uh, development when the players are coming into the youth team. I mean, how how what I mean, how do you support these young players? 
coming into that environment. I mean, as we all know, you know, young players have to make mistakes to learn. I mean, how, how do they? How do you create this environment where they're, you know, they can make these mistakes, but at that highest level, and you know, and how do you give these players a bit more time, maybe? Uh, it's always difficult to to to, um, to to find the the unique way which will not change. It's always always approach which will give uh, uh, results. So they 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 can change approach in uh, development. But uh, sometimes uh, I think that the main directions are always same. So uh, when when they when they don't uh, achieve some some. Uh, Top level of uh, of playing, uh, they they will they will try to to find the, the reason why, and they will try to find uh, the way how they will uh, uh, actually uh, make him better. So uh, the, the, that approach the, that they have sometimes can give uh, not not very good results. But when you have very good players uh, in the box, when you when you have lot of lot of good players. Uh, you will you will in that development uh, give solution to all players to reach the top the, the 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 best level of the plane. Sometimes it's not enough for Dynamo. Sometimes it's enough only for for the lower level. But it's very good uh, to to make constantly very good approach in that kind of work. So they will uh, make success and go abroad and. Uh, uh, Probably good managers and a good connection with the clubs will uh, give opportunity to make a good transfers and good success. I mentioned as well when you're working at the first team level. How much technical work, uh, if any, do you do with players, or is it mostly tactical, uh, team-related stuff? I mean, do, do individuals get to work on their on their weaknesses and stuff like that? Uh, well, when you when you work in the top club, when you work on the higher level, then uh, actually result is the most important thing that you 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 need under your head, and you need to 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 prepare to be always under the pressure to make good results, and because res- result will give you opportunity to play in the Champions League or uh, on UEFA League, or go in a further competition as a national uh, player. So uh, you you have to be on the top. You have to have results. You have to be uh, successful. If you are not, then you will not have uh, possibility to, to to make a good transfers and to be on the top. Uh, on the other side, you really need to give them uh, always uh, potentially uh, good skills, demands, and uh, 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 games that that will uh, develop them and also give them possibility to. Uh, to grow, to be better, and uh, sometimes, sometimes players on the top don't don't like to to, to give them something that will uh, make them better because on the other hand that is the, the the truth that they are not good enough, so they will refuse it maybe. But uh, you have to be clever and you have to have a good approach to 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 make reasonable contact with the player and to give them possibility to work. Uh, uh, personally outside of the team to develop some skills they maybe are not very good enough they maybe can work on some conditional uh, characteristic and uh, possibilities and sometimes it will make better better impact than they play with the other team or, or other players and so tell us a little bit about then. I mean, you said you, you worked with Luka Modric when he was there. Tell us a little bit. About, tell us a little bit about Luka when he was in uh, at Dynamo and your time with him. Uh, about him? Yeah. I mean, what, what what I mean, what was he like when he came in as a, as a young player to the first team environment? <clears throat> well, uh, if we we just we just need to follow his uh, game and and the way he is playing. He is oriented uh, mostly on the football, on the game. On the competition, uh, on a, on a good movement and a, a successful uh, uh, playing in, in in the team, and I think that uh, uh, that is that is on the other hand uh, most important thing in the football to develop uh, players in the real game learning, in the in the real base learning, in the competition, in uh, when you have a. a uh, opponent on 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 your on on the other side, because this is that is the good motivation that uh, develop your thinking, 
that create uh, environment which will uh, give you same environment as in the game and I think that uh, Luca was motivated mostly in the games mostly in the competition uh, and uh, everything uh, else will be on the second or third place I mean but I mean to but tell him a little bit how, I mean in terms of you know what sort of player was he when he came in obviously you know was he did he hit the road running as they say in England was he very you know he came in and already could tell that he was going to be a superstar uh, no, well, he he is a, he he is a guy which which came from from uh, from poor family from from he was a refugee from the, from uh, his uh, born area during the during the war in in Croatia and he he was really really. Uh, uh, some some perfect guy in the beginning he was not uh, actually well he knew uh, he knew that uh, he will he will uh, do do the best to to to, to achieve uh, uh, top level but uh, as 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 i know him he he was really um, standing on on their feet he was going slowly step by step he didn't didn't uh, uh, give us any 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 sign that uh, he want uh, to be a rich man. He want to be a top player. But dreams, as you know, every player have dreams. So dreams was something that he always had. And I think that the dead dreams and uh, and and, uh, and his uh, way of thinking to to catch a start was like in the others always present. I mean, you talk about in the beginning. In the beginning, <clears throat> as a player, in the beginning, well, he was uh, very small. He was. Uh, he was uh, later matured. He was uh, actually not very strong, but uh, he he was in some tough club in uh, uh, in Bosnia. Also, when Dinamo uh, invited him to be invite him to be a, a player in Dinamo, so they give possibility to him to go to Bosnia, and he played first league. <coughs> sorry, he played first league uh, league there, and then he became a very good. Uh, player there, one of the the, the top five uh, players in, in the whole league. So he came back and went to another club in Croatia, not in Dinamo. And then after that, he started to play for Dinamo. So that was a three or five years way uh, in a, in a under under eighteen and and upper upper level to start to play to start playing in the top level uh, in Dinamo. Yeah, interesting. I mean, you talked about there, you know, the game and how important it is uh, when he was working in that environment. I mean, but I'm, I was lucky enough to be at Tottenham when he was there, and I always remember he was very much, very diligent. He always used to work away from the game as well. Very, you know, very technically minded, very, you know, hard working away from the game. How how important do you think it is for for the, do, you, do you think that's a trait that all top players have that they you know they they go after training they go and do their own work and work on their technical areas. Uh, I think that every player need to have uh, uh, will and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, idea that they can be better. If they have uh, in the head that they can be better, they will do everything to 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 catch it to achieve the better the better uh, uh, stand of the play. And then uh, I think that uh, Luca in the beginning was uh, was a guy who didn't uh, uh, catch priority in the game. He was he was in the game, he was in the team, but he didn't he didn't uh, make a role of the leader. Uh, sometimes when it happened that that the game was very tough and the game started to be uh, equal. And, and then he catch a ball and he start to make solutions which will give possibility to the team to 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 win. So I think that it, it was the same same thing in the in the development of uh, his place and uh, uh, his qualities. He he started to uh, adapt to the the modern play to be all the time in the game, not to go away for the five six minutes around and then go back. He was starting to grow, and I think that now, really, he's uh, uh, on the on the on the really top level as the best player in the world. It's interesting because uh, when Luka Modric, I remember very well when he first arrived at Tottenham in England, and you know people were saying he's too small, maybe for the Premier League, maybe he's not physical enough. I mean, I, I on my recent trip to 
to Dynamo, I noticed that in the academy, the young boys uh, weren't as physically uh, developed maybe as a lot of the boys in England. So maybe, you know, physicality is not really something which is maybe the, the first thing recruitment look for. I mean, how, how do you deal with that? You know, obviously smaller players, you know, in influencing games and maybe giving them a bit more time to, to make an impact like you talk, to, talked about. Yeah, always, always is, uh, always is a question of uh, action when when you have some some players which uh, don't have uh, characteristic which uh, which are needed for for the for the game. Uh, when you compare, for example, for Xavi from 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 Spain, well, uh, you will never say that he is a, a good a good characteristic uh, for the player. Also, he was very small, but he was very clever. And I think from the beginning, when you are trying to make a good selection of the good players, you have to uh, have to catch uh, players which are very good in the thinking, very good in a, uh, a technical technical way of uh, presenting the game, uh, to, uh, which will have idea in the game, and then also for uh, for for development, you you have to have continuous work and give them the best skills and the best way to develop them in the way of, of, of growing and developing of the player. But sometimes you need to really uh, wait when you are uh, want them in the game. Regarding game, you can say that uh, it's sometimes needed to put them uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the environment of the game which will be on the same level like they are. Uh, some 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 children will grow very fast, will be very big, will will have a, a hard contact, and the others will be on the other side, very very far from that that guy because they will be afraid in the duel in the in the in the challenge with them, so they will not present excellent football maybe that we expect that they will do, but sometimes also you will have possibility that you have that guy which is very small but he is a very tough he will not uh, go away he will be there he will try to catch a ball he will be clever in the tactical way so he will give on the right time ball to the other players and go go across and then receive another ball so that kind of player we need to support and try to develop and find a solution how they will grow in the that environment of, of I suppose, uh, I, suppose I suppose it's about being patient right and uh, like you said maybe they go out on loan to a smaller club they come back again but giving those players time to to reach their okay. potential uh, yeah uh, sometimes sometimes maybe it's a very good idea uh, to give them opportunity to go in some other other clubs which will give them possibility to play all the time because uh, after all when you have uh, players uh, under 16 under 17 under 18 which are mostly uh, competitors and they need to compete uh, you you really sometimes don't have enough time to give uh, enough minutes or enough uh, half uh, of the game to the player, so they will stand uh, somewhere uh, around and not. They will not play. When player don't play, it's some things they will lose in development. So it's uh, crucial to give them possibility to play even in a smaller clubs for some time and try to follow how they develop in the smaller smaller club and give them possibility to go back or even train sometimes with the with the with the coaches which will give them some uh, impact of the of the of the necessary skills which they work in the bigger club i mean it's i work with a lot of uh, young pros and pros here individually in in london and uh, they i get a, a similar message where they say um game, playing games is so important we have a an under 23s league here in England, maybe a bit like the B team there, but the, the players say maybe that the intensity or the level is not the same as playing in an, in a men's you know men's league you know as a, a proper okay. competitive division. Yes, what, what's what's your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, well, actually, you 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 need to wait. You need to wait for the player, but player needs to have some uh, some support by some activities which will not be. 
directly connected with the with the with the game, with the with the team which which played uh, games every every Sunday or or in the middle of the week. So you need to work more to to catch the same same level of uh, 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 some some uh, you you need to reach you need to reach some some level of the of the competition that you you need to have on the on the game but you will not reach it probably uh, during the game because it's uh, not enough then you need to work more after uh, maybe without him maybe in some small groups which will give you support in in terms of uh, development of conditional way or uh, challenges or um, some techniques or some uh, pressure which will give you uh, same situation that you need in the game which will be in the upper level of the of the level that you are temporarily on i mean is it is it the same there in um croatia where there's a big jump up there from the b team to the first team i mean and and, and how how do you try and uh, combat that in terms of giving those players this the same sort of experiences uh, players in the big club uh, usually have possibility to work with the individual player, uh, with the individual coach. They uh, they have possibility to work more when they don't have uh, enough uh, uh, from the game. And I think that is crucial and necessary for players to 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 work individually also and uh, to try to be. Uh, much much more involved uh, in activities which will give them possibility to 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 grow and to be better for the uh, upper level of the competition i think it's necessary in croatia in the bigger clubs you have opportunity to to have uh, individual coaches and uh, you can work also i think that uh, many 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 coaches on the on the higher level uh, of competition uh, in the top clubs also have individual coaches which are always on disposal to to work with them and to give them support and give them idea and uh, talk with them to to find solution maybe if they are not in the in the very good mood or they made some injuries or something like that i think it's a very good idea and i mean and on my last trip to dynamo every time i've been there actually I, there's a real emphasis on 1v1 in the whole academy so when i was there last time i saw the under eights all the way up to the b team every session had an element of 1v1 uh, how important is that uh, and in, in terms of how does that work also in the first team environment uh well i think that uh, in uh, today's football you really um need to 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 be to be perfect in uh, in one v one because uh, uh, everyone knows to, how to play football. Everyone knows to stand and defend. Everyone knows uh, how to uh, react in the some situations. And sometimes you need that uh, person on the field who will take uh, lead and who will who will uh, catch uh, catch empty space. Who will develop. Uh, situation who will uh, who will run who will make a dribble and something like that so you need to prepare every player for that situation and sometimes when you need to uh, have excellent player you need to give them opportunity to be one against two or one against three and this is the different differences that players will will uh, will make against opponent when you know how to solve some problems which uh, you can't solve with your friend, with your teammate uh, on the field, and you need to take your responsibility and try to find solution in that moment. Sometimes it's easier because you are uh, very far from your goal. Sometimes it's very risky because you are very near your goal, so there is uh, always uh, some chance to, to score a goal. And uh, in that, that case, you really need to be very, very responsible in that that time and uh, find try to find a very good solution to 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 solve the problem and because of that you really need to make a lot of uh, skills and a lot of uh, games and a lot of exercises which will uh, give you opportunity to solve that on the training sessions uh, in the individuals approach um, develop your thinking in the in mind of one on one 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 v one, and then uh, it's uh, it's some some of the main task for the coaches. 
Okay, interesting. So let, we'll, we'll come back to that in a, in a bit because I just want to talk now about, tell us about your current role um, at the Croatian Football Federation. Uh, I am current in the education department of uh, Croatian Football Academy. I'm working here uh, and educate coaches for uh, all levels on so UEFA B, UEFA A and UEFA Pro. Um, I am also supporting uh, uh, coaches in uh, in development in the further education and uh, I am very proud that our coaches today are very successful that we have very good coaches on the on the on the level level of, of top competition uh, we can begin with our head coach of the national team mr dalic and the others which are very high in in, in competition Nenad Bielica which is now uh, uh, coach of Dinamo Zagreb and he will try to compete in the spring uh, in the next level of the round he was he he catched the uh, he got the top top level of uh, of competition in 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 the in the round competition for the for the UEFA league, and I think that uh, we we really we really have very big results in 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 in, in competition. I mean, it's interesting because you have you know we all know we have such you have such fantastic players. Uh, you've got great coaches as well. So I mean, tell us a little bit about the the football coaching landscape in Croatia. I mean, obviously, I, I was in Geneva and you made that fantastic presentation. But tell our listeners about you know what's it like. Obviously, a com- you know you're obviously a, you're a relatively new country. I mean, what what's it like there and on the ground uh, for coaches? Uh, you you said you said that we are very new cu- country. It is only because we are we are separated from the from the ex uh, ex uh, Yugoslavia from 1990s. But uh, I can tell you that, for example, we we really uh, have a, a very good, very good uh, traditional way of uh, uh, playing football and uh, uh, of uh, having a good work with the with the with the players. But mostly in the last last ten years, when we are uh, saying that uh, we have. Uh, uh, good results. It is something which came from 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 30 years ago, 20 years ago, when we when we started to work very hard. Potentially, we are a country which will not have any uh, sh- uh, shopping and go buy uh, players abroad and and buy coaches abroad. We need to produce. We are a very small country. We need to have own uh, forces on our own. And I think that uh, in that that uh, case, we really need to be uh, potentially very active in the in the work of development of the coaches and also development of the players. I mean, you, you talked about tradition there. I mean, it's called, I'm very interested in, in football culture. I mean, I mean, you do have a tradition of producing very technical footballers. I mean, people, you know, people do call you know that part of the world, you guys, the Brazilians of Europe. That's what the, the famously called the Yugoslavians for many years. Why, why do you think that is? I mean, why, why and how do you uh, create such technical footballers so consistently? I think that uh, the main reason is because uh, our approach to the football game. Because uh, when, you, when you remember some, some, some players which, which came from generation of 98, uh, Mr. Boban, Mr. Prosinecki, Mr. Asanovic, a lot of technically perfect uh, players, uh, that will say that our our players really love to play game. They want to they want to be uh, very good in uh, movement, in uh, dribbling, in uh, shooting on the goal. And sometimes when you're comparing with uh, uh, some trends, then you you can see it a lot of on the internet or, or some different approach in some countries. You can't give uh, to the player just the drills which will develop robot or develop some usual things they need to to have in 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 idea of the playing game because sometimes the game will go in a different way so you couldn't so you couldn't uh, 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 presume what will happen or what will be necessary to do and in our country i think that uh, that is the main main point uh, that we want to develop also in the all uh, teams and the and the, and 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 we want to catch from the from the from the players develop good technique and a good uh, good opinion and thinking thinking opinion to 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 find solution 
on the small space, in the small time, on the pressure of the opponent, and I think it's the main main thing that will give uh, some some kind of advantage on other teams. Uh, do you think those? I mean, those guys there. You talked about that fantastic generation. Do you think they were a result of you know they were just born from street football? They were just you know they they came in there, or do you think you know they were actually you still can or do you get those those outcomes from a structured environment as well? Um, well, maybe maybe in the past, but I think that uh, as as everywhere in the world, also media and uh, uh, mobile phones and uh, all all things like that uh, are also uh, here in our lives, and we also have problem to 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 give opportunity to the players to stand with the ball much more time than than they they have when they are on the mobile phones and surrounded with the games uh, on the TV and some films or some 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 things they they have on on their mind because uh, in the past there was uh, no such uh, activities we we played on the streets we played around the playgrounds we were all, always out of our houses our homes and i think that today all clubs need to have some connection with the parents and with the with the children to give them some opportunity to come in some activities which are mostly not uh, directly on the field on the on the area which is training session it can be connected with the, some uh, free time but also connected with the football also with the ball also with the, some competition which can maybe give them more motivation to spend some time with the with the with the ball with the with the team with the colleagues from the clubs and make much 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 more connection uh, between the the uh, the the colleagues and and the friends. I mean that's interesting because um, yeah, obviously my my philosophy is very much based around giving players individual time on the ball that that supporting them and developing that relationship that individual ball mastery and I saw that's a big. Uh, a big part of the philosophy at Dynamo as well. I mean, but obviously, like you said earlier, you know, the importance of obviously getting them in games as well in your sessions. I suppose it's about finding a balance, isn't it, between giving them some time on the ball and then giving them those times in competitive game environments as well. Yeah, I think that uh, I, it it can be compared also by it can be compared also by by the real life. If you have always something which is the same like yesterday or day before, it will not be interesting for you uh, in the next three four weeks maybe earlier. So you need to be always uh, in the position to uh, motivate players. To, to, to motivate them to be better and the ball is the one of the object which will give which will give uh, to every player uh, motivation and the possibility to be better so I think that every session and every uh, every game every exercise every skill needs to have ball as an object no matter what what is the main aim of the exercise but ball will be the object of the motivation to catch her to uh, to catch it to 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 go with uh, with the ball to receive the ball to find the ball to 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 go with the ball on the way you need to go and something what will give you motivation because ball is motivation what we do always when we go on the field we first take ball no one will go on the field they'll go walk or run everyone will take the ball everyone will uh, try to shoot it on the goal everyone will uh, try to give skills to to uh, to put ball up and that is the motivation which kids and the players most wanted. I mean, it's interesting. I have here beside me the uh, the development curriculum um, done by your compatriot Romeo Jozak, who's also been okay. on the show before. Very, very detailed, uh, amazingly detailed approach into teaching technical elements of the game. I mean, um, so I'm interested. You know, how how does that work in practice, and how do you support coaches in getting that detail across to the players? Uh, well, to understand work, always you need details. To understand work, what will you choose? That will depends on your philosophy, approach, and the plan and the program of the club. And sometimes you need to uh, to have your TV, but uh, people who will uh, try to 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 solve solution why those TV don't work, they need to open it and try to find every detail of the TV to make him better. So it's the same in the work. If you want to try to 
have a good work, you have to make a lot of details and a lot of areas uh, which will uh, be interesting for developing of the player, try to develop that uh, exercises, that skills, try to find uh, the most important details and try to correct them if they are not good, try to develop them if they uh, need to be development. But I think that also approach, if you every time have everywhere with every detail, maybe it will give you away from the main point of the exercise. So you always need some balance, uh, you always need some idea what you want to do, you need to have final aim you need to catch and then details will be surely help you and surely help to player to, to, to find very good solution how to work. So I mean tell us how that works then with your coach education now. I mean practically so I mean how how do you construct your courses to support your coaches to, to get these technical details into the to the players? From the beginning, from the beginning, they they will go on the sea level. As is always, uh, there is a base of the football to to try to catch uh, the, the the base thing in the in the coaching level. But the but the, but the real coaching starts with UEFA B level when they they need to find uh, the way how to how to react on the on the field, how to create exercises, how to uh, how to find a solution to develop something in the uh, for the players. Uh, on UEFA A level, we try to uh, develop some philosophy in the game and try to analyze game and try to uh, catch solution in the four four moments of the game. Some of some of uh, the problems they need to solve uh, when they have uh, opponent with a different system they play, and we are mostly concentrated on, concentrate on that. And uh, UEFA Pro level, where they are uh, try to be most individual work in, in individual work individual approach uh, develop their own philosophy uh, catching the information and the ideas we gave them and uh, try to find an, uh, the way they will do uh, coach work in the future I think that uh, uh, it's very good that between those, those education they have um, obligation to go to the club to make a practice to be with the team to make competition and they will develop uh, themselves during that competition and uh, and uh, uh, work in the club and do you, I mean it's interesting because obviously it's UEFA B so you're working um, from the you know UEFA curriculum as it were but I mean you 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 put your own spin on it I mean it's that it's the Croatian way of doing it I mean I know that you know it, it's it most likely looks a little bit different in in different countries is that is that right <clears throat> well actually uh, UEFA give us uh, uh, our our book how how we need to need to do our job in uh, education and I think that every country have uh, own philosophy and 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 all own ideas uh, uh, in approaching to to the solving problems from the football game and this, that is that what what uh, uh, makes football different. For example, in Netherlands, for example, in Spain, for example, in Russia, for example, in Balkan Balkan countries, everywhere football is the same. But on the other hand, it's very different. So it's the same in education. We have same same um, rules, same conditions, same uh, way of uh, education, but during the education there are some differences which will give us some uh, uh, important differences which which are specific for our our country or our coaches I mean, that's what interests me because obviously you have a relatively small population but I mean in terms of the players you produce and the outputs really high and the type of players as well whereas you know you maybe contrast that to somewhere for instance like Scandinavia where they have, you mm -hmm. know, similar like those populations maybe aren't aren't again relatively small populations, but they're they're not producing the same sorts of players. Maybe their the players aren't as technically gifted, or there's not the high uh, percentage. Okay. Why why do you think that is? Why does he have that difference in the sorts of players? I, th I think I think that uh, one of the the most important things is tradition. If you have tradition, uh, then that is something that always reminds you what to do and give you give you some. Uh, 
spirit, what, what will give you uh, continuous work. And I think that also, uh, on the other hand, uh, we are people which mostly uh, can adapt on new situations very quickly, very fast, because uh, during our lives uh, in a history, we was really always uh, in some position that we need to adapt to the new people who came to Croatia as a, for example, from from lot lot of lot of years in history, there was a uh, so many so many different different uh, governments and something like that. And then you need to adapt to the new situation. You try to survive. You try to be better. You try to be to turn some money. You try to develop develop you as a, as a person to try to work something. So every time you need to adapt to the new situation. Potentially, if you are surrounded with a with a uh, with a with a environment which uh, which uh, are arranged very well. So there is no need to be uh, very adaptable because uh, you don't need to. Uh, for example, when when you um, I don't know go somewhere abroad, you have to adapt to the new situation. There is a new language, there is a new letters, there is a new uh, way of living, there is a new food, there is a new uh, idea uh, in in living style, and I think that that is the most 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 mostly different. From, from the country you mentioned uh, when when you compare with with our country I think it's uh, adaptable adaptable people and uh, tradition and continuous way of of work uh, something that we we have in our minds in our blood I think is the main reason that we we have that kind of that kind of uh, success and and it's quite interesting I mean it's, it's a great point because obviously in England we've maybe had a little bit of a revolution almost in our tradition in terms of the way we're trying to get players to play maybe we're finally you know adapting to the modern demands of the game I mean what's I mean obviously we had the semi-final uh, which was an interesting which is great obviously for you guys but I mean what's your um, what's what's your thoughts on on in English football for example and, and the types of players they, they we develop over here I think that uh, you have really excellent players uh, in your country. I think that uh, you have uh, young players which will have uh, which will have mostly success in the future. Uh, uh, sometimes I think that maybe in in England you have uh, a lot of lot of players which are not from England. Maybe some coaches also which are not from England, and sometimes maybe it can be um, obstacle for uh, some idea that you want to achieve and uh, develop uh, from your own. Sometimes it's maybe maybe uh, good because there are new ideas that you will you will catch from 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 other people and from other players. But on the other hand, you are playing with a national team, and if you if you have uh, mostly uh, strong strong league with uh, with your own players and uh, not so many for agent players, which will which will give uh, uh, some spirit of the uh, England team. Maybe it is some kind of uh, way that few steps or one step can be better than than it is now but i think that the england will will surely surely go go uh, to the top uh, very soon because you have very good player potentially very very uh, uh, young player and i think that it will it will surely have uh, results in the future i mean as as a coach though you're looking at that semi final what do you think were the differences between the teams and why do you think croatia were successful in that in that particular game uh, <laughs> now it's very hard to to remember every every detail from from the game but do you think it was purely a tactical thing or do you think uh, for me uh, for I me think, i think there was I, a big technical difference in the type and especially uh, the midfielders uh, and the sorts of players you had i th i think when you compare uh, there was a two games first one in the first half second was in the second half uh, Engl England was uh, uh, in the beginning very strong and proud and 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 uh, team which which decides to to beat and to be to be better to to won to go in a further competition and from that stand they was very superior in the in the first half and and tried to try to um, score it during the first half 
And on the other hand, we uh, was a little bit back. We, we, we waited a little bit because we, we knew that there was a there was big hurricane in the first in the first uh, half. And maybe in that that uh, that way, it happened in the second half that we started to play very good. We started to grow. And the, on the other on 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 the, on the other hand, England started to play much more slowly than 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 in the first half and. It uh, it came on on the other hand with a different result. I think that that is the main that is the main uh, reason. Interesting. And, and, and uh, just, uh, just obviously, uh, no time's getting on here, so just a couple more questions. I mean, tell us a little bit about grassroots coaches. I remember you, you were saying in Geneva when you did your presentation about uh, trying to get all coaches um, qualified. Is that right? I mean, what's the, I mean, is, is there we have a big culture of volunteer coaches in this country and in, in, mm-hmm. in America as well. Is it the same in Croatia? Uh, in Croatia is a different situation because uh, in Croatia we have uh, coaches uh, which are mostly uh, uh, part of the clubs, but they are also in a, in a full-time job or part-time job there. Uh, they they have some 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 fee for that that they are working in the clubs. Uh, of course, they need to to work very well. But I think that uh, uh, when you when you compare other countries. Uh, I said that uh, in our country is not very good style of living when you have very good job and you spend a lot of time on the work until five o'clock and you have enough money to live then probably you don't have to work for the money in the other part of the day but when you are living for example in in Croatia there is a some some kind of way that you can live uh, uh, for 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 something and also we want to do very good job we want to have players which are very good development uh, developed and we also need some coaches which will work with with that players and if we have that uh, good coaches we want to pay them so that we will be sure that they will do very good job and in from that point of view that is the some of uh, main reason because we don't have actually uh, coaches as volunteers here in Croatia. I mean, so yeah, just to clarify that, then, so basically, all coaches have a qualification, right? They have to have a they have to have a minimum qualification. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We ha- we have we have our licensing system, and uh, today we uh, make a good good organization of uh, of uh, licensing system, and in every club. Uh, coaches need to have a uh, license, they need to be educated in uh, coaching level, so only that kind of uh, educated coaches can work in, in clubs. So they have to have a C license, is that right? Is that the minimum? They, they, minim- it, depends, it, de- it, it depends on the, on the level of uh, competition. It depends on the level of the competition uh, because you are on the lower level. Then you started with a C license. Is if, if level of the competition of the club start to grow and to the final top, they need to have uh, uh, higher licenses. Depends of the level of competition. It's UEFA B, UEFA A, or, or UEFA Pro. Uh, if we are saying of uh, A team or or uh, under 18 team. I think it's quite that's quite interesting because it's not the case here. You get a lot of, uh, like, say, parents who want to get involved. This they're very, you know, obviously have a good, uh, freight, you know, positive way they want to try and do things. But uh, it's quite powerful, I suppose, having everybody qualified and educated. I mean, as you know, you know, you, yeah, if you're talking about the elite level, I mean, it's about trying to educate the base and improve the base, and, and that filters up to the top of the pyramid. So, I mean, that, that's quite a, that's quite a, a remarkable. Uh, thing to happen in in a country, I think. Um, yes, uh, if if we are saying that uh, uh, parents need uh, to be with the child, it's correct and it needs to be. But I, we think that if uh, children is on the field, uh, with, when player, when kid is on the field, uh, they need to be much much more concentrated on the. On the something is happening on the field, not to watch every time where is a mother or a father or someone from the family. And uh, in that kind of uh, approach, you 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 have much more effective work on the field. No matter is it a game, is it the exercise, is it the uh, so- something they they play. It it is most important to have person who will be in charge for that. And uh, children are very adaptable. They will lead someone who is uh, 
uh, there to motivate them, who is a second parent, we can say, and uh, who will give them uh, environment to be fun, to play the game, to shoot the ball, or develop themselves in the in the in the in the late ages uh, later to to make a, a top top level player. I suppose it's a little bit common sense, really, isn't it? I mean, it's such a responsible position that you have there with people, you know, people working with young children and doing supporting them something they love. I mean, why sh- why shouldn't you get everybody to get a license? Like you have to have in other parts of the world, right? Or other parts yeah, of you know society yeah, in life. Because yeah, I, I know, but uh, I think that uh, uh, we we can we can maybe say that we we have we have in Croatia a lot of a lot of uh, 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 we can say. Um, uh, uh, see, uh, play agencies which which are having uh, 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 which are, which are try to to catch uh, children and uh, spend their time when parents are uh, went to the shopping and they are with them they play they are fun they having good time but if you want to uh, continuously develop and uh, adapt players because our first phase of Coaching is adaptation. Adapt. We need to adapt players to 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 be uh, the much uh, better they can be on the field in the uh, in the shooting in the in the goalkeeping in the challenge and everything. And that is why we need to uh, have good qualification for the coaches and the licenses for them, which will allow them to work. Because we don't want uh, anyone in the world who will maybe not be very good in the creating because who will who will be there for mentoring good coaching who will be there to see if they are working very good uh, on our uh, faculty education on uh, kinesiology there are people that are spending six to eight years to educate themselves to work in the sport. So I think that if some parents will come on the field and have 10 or 20 or 30 hours of the education, it's not enough to be a coach. So you, you, you have to really be careful because when you are working with the people, especially when you are working with the small people, you need to be educated and you, you have to know what you are working. And and what about yourself, Boris? I mean, what, who are your main influences on in your coaching philosophy and and, and the way you deliver? Uh, well, uh, for me, I think that it's most important to uh, adapt for every coach to adapt to the team or to the players that uh, coach is working with, and uh, prepare for them the most. Uh, uh, important or the best exercises or skills and give the men and the task they they have to have in the ages they are they are uh, playing football and uh, trying to to always watch and finally look what they need and maybe also adapt to the new situation when they can't do something when they are doing something wrong when they they don't want to do something they 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 will work if they have very good coach in front of them so they will they will give them best uh, from them in in that case I mean, but so do, adapt, do you, do you have sorry for a do do you have someone though who was a big influence in your career a, some a coach who maybe that you learned a lot from uh, as I said uh, before, I was uh, in amateur football. Uh, I, I was not on the top and professional level. Uh, I was listening a lot of our famous coaches, which was on, which were on television and and, and saying uh, 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 something to the, to the players. And always, always is something that that is uh, that is important for everyone in every job in everything what you do. Never give up. You have to know what you want, and you have to work the best you can. Otherwise, you don't have to work. Okay. And just uh, finally, what what would your be advice to like a young aspiring coach who wants to you know get to a level like you've reached in your career? Uh, to to come in the level of uh, UEFA pro coach. Yeah, or you know, any yeah, you know, someone who wants to make a career in coaching. What's your advice to someone who wants to, you know, make a make a who's at the beginning of their journey who wants to, you know, be a be a top level coach? Uh, ah, <laughs> well, uh, who wants to be a coach? But first of all, it's not easy job. Yeah, it looks like, but it's not easy job. That is the first advice for the new coaches. 
Uh, and the second one, there is always uh, two kind of coaches. Coaches which will uh, which will come and have to leave, and those who are leaving. <laughs> There are two coaches, yeah. there are two coaches, there are two coaches. One who will come and he will leave and there are another one who is leaving. Very good. Okay, Boris, thank you very much. It's been fantastic. Appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you. Be, be very careful in uh, be very careful in preparing all <laughs> all texts the, I, I said on the phone because there was a lot of a lot of uh, language mistakes because I, I really was uh, in a in a in a in a in a concentration of of, of, of conversation. But uh, thank you very much and thank you thank you also for uh, for inviting me to have a conversation with you and I wish you a lot of success in your work. Thank you, Boris. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in to the MyPersonalFootballCoach.com Soccer Player Development Podcast. MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Dynamic Ball Mastery Program is the world's leading online individual technical training program, proven and developed at the highest level in the English Premier League. Sign up now to train like the pros and take your game to the next level. Master the ball, master the game. <laughs>